If you want to pull your cogs directly into the spreadsheet using our formulas, then you have to add your data into your account. Go into your Gorilla ROI account. From there, go to Manage Cogs. And in this new menu, you're going to now see uh, all of the SKUs that are currently in your Seller Central account. Okay, so even if you use, say, um, North America Fulfillment or you fulfill to other countries, you can pull it and then update the COGS based on Marketplace. So this is the agenda that I'm going to go through. So first of all, let's walk through the web user interface. What you'll see is you'll be able to see your seller account, the different marketplaces, your SKUs, as well as um, all the information related to your cost. So if you want to now add a cost, so let me start off here and let's say I want to delete this and start pretty much blank. Initially, you're going to, oh, you're going to see this where it says nothing, zero, blank, blank. Okay, to add a cog, the easiest one is going to be just using the interface click on the button and then and select the date so let's say i want to select it for say february 2022 17 and let's do one dollar keep it easy okay check it uh and then it's going to show that the latest cogs is now going to be based on february 17th so now let's say the cost has increased so i'm going to do another plus and this way October 11 this way you can now keep track of all the different costs associated with the product So each time you add it here, it's now going to update the cost and it's going to display What date the cost is from? Okay, so before When I entered this first one from February 17 It was at one dollar and the cost would then calculate everything up to February 17 using one dollar Right, so if I did my sales calculation and I pulled in, say, uh, sales from February 1 to February 15, it's going to use $1. And then let's say I want to get my sales from, like, say, October 1 to October 15. It's going to start using, um, actually, I take that back. It's going to be using $1 until October 11th since it's that's the next cost date. Okay. Uh, now let's add another one. I'm going to add, say, something more recent, say January 25. Let's say it went up to 142. Okay. Now all the costs from January 25th onward is going to be using 142. All the cost up to January 25th is going to be using the previous cost of $1.11. Okay. And so that's how you can keep adding. Now you can do this manually if you want, but if you have hundreds and thousands of different SKUs, then the best way is going to be obviously using the CSV file, which I'll get to later. Okay, so that's how you add the cost. Editing the cost, it's going to be exactly pretty much the same. Click on this and then you can click on the blue pen icon. Let's say I want to change this down to say I made a mistake. It should have been $1.32. Okay, save it. It gets updated, saved, and now it's going to display 132 and all the um, previous numbers is going to adjust based on this current cost of 132 instead of 142. Whenever you make any of these changes, okay, you're able to now track the changes. So go into COGS history. Okay, from here, you're able to see that the last date um, before I, while I was taking this video, I uploaded a CSV file. So that's why I'm showing you that this is it. So this is the latest information that I have right now. Um, and to date, today I made 20 updates via the user interface and I uploaded 537 prices. Okay, so um, the total SKUs were 526, but I uploaded more just to, for checking this and that. And of those, of the total 526 SKUs, right now it says that 137 are marked as zero dollars. Okay, so maybe it's a product that I discontinued and I don't really care about what the historical price is. I just set it to zero. What you have to look out for is if there's a SKU without a cost, so it's like a blank. So if that's the case, then you either have to convert it into a zero or update the product uh, cost to whatever it should be. You always want to try and make sure that the SKUs with, without a cost is always at zero because otherwise it means your COGS isn't going to be calculating accurately because you haven't entered it into the system. 
Okay, so that's what it means by uh, when you have SKUs with no cost in the system and SKUs with cost is zero in the system. Okay, so you can see like if I go to manage cogs again, uh, right now I don't think I have anything as zero, but let's say I change the second one. Okay, I'm going to ch change this one. Now this has no cost. Okay, so if I go in here and if I you'll now see that the SKU has one without a cost. Now let me change this back again. Okay, so right now this one has no cost. I'm gonna up change this back to say actually let's do this and 212. Okay, and then if I go back into cogs and I update or refresh, it's now going to show me that there is no more SKUs without a cost, so I am good. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you use the web interface. Now, once all of these numbers are populated, then you can then go as the next part of the video, I'll show you how you can actually pull all of these numbers in using the formula. First, let's now move on to using the CSV file. Okay. To use a CSV, to do things in bulk, go to Upload Cogs and it's going to have a templatized file that you can just download. If you just want everything blank, obviously, then select this. But if you want a uh, something with some more information like, like the product titles, the ASIN, some additional information, then click on this one, Download Cogs Data. So click this, it's going to download. I'm going to open it up uh, in my computer here. Okay, just give me a sec. Okay, bring it over. And now you'll see that based on all the current information that I have at the moment, it's exported a CSV file. It's got the ASINs, the names, and the current cost and the currency associated with the account. So this test account has uh, is selling in US, Canada, and Germany. And so based on that, I can use different currency conversions. It's going to use the local currency. So even if you think that you can put everything in as USD, it's not going to work. You have to convert it to whatever your, the local currency is. And now let's say I made a bunch of edits to this. So let's say I made, say, I'm going to just do like, okay. Make some edits here, pause it for now. Okay, so I made some changes and I'm also going to change the date so that uh, it's going to now be 3.11. Okay, so as I'm recording this on 3.11, I'm going to say these are the prices that were updated at 3.11. And now I'm going to save this, close it, and then upload it. Okay, saved, close that, and now I'm going to upload the file. And it's this one that I just did. So I'm going to open this one upload when you upload it's also and this is also for either uh, for the non-us people so w make sure you verify your date format and it matches so we've tried to account for the different people in the different regions so right now since i'm in the us i'm going to do mmdd -Y, 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 y okay that's the format month day year but let's say you're in europe or something and you want to do day day month month year, year, year right then make sure the date format matches whatever you did in the csv otherwise it's going to throw an error and you won't be able to update okay so i'm going to change it back to here we go okay so once it's done the message is telling me that okay blah 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 looks pretty good okay i'm going to import and now it's updated okay and then when you look at the dates now you'll see that the ones that i did change that i uploaded as march 11th march 11th uh yep march 11th march 11th okay so these are the ones that were updated and it's been uploaded correctly so this is how you can bulk change and then just keep track of all your cogs within our uh, within your account in our system